My name is Carl Smarte. I'm a former drug kingpin. I ran a multi-million dollar drug business, which led me to six years in prison. And I'm about to play Never Have I Ever. When you're in the drug game, it happened multiple times where I've been robbed, guns pointed. There was one particular time where like, one of my guys like stepped out of the stash house and they came in you know, with a gun pointed at his head. They tied everybody up, which is crazy to me. They, they, they stole all the weed and a little bit of money from the safe, but there was so much Coke on the table that they didn't realize it was Coke and they left it. <laughs> There, so we, you know, they, they stole like maybe five grand of weed and left like a hundred thousand dollars worth of coke on the table. When I was younger, I was cutting my work, but I quickly found out the, the better way to like be an honest drug dealer is not to cut your work. And that's how you have people come back. It's the same thing with the business world. If you deliver a great product, you'll still have that consistency of clientele. Crazy true story. It was a drought, which means like there was not a lot of stuff coming in. And so I had to go up to a second supplier that I had in Washington Heights. I went up to this guy, bought a kilo off of him. When I got home, I like left it on, on the table and I stepped out and I came back and it was melted, like liquid melted. And so I'm with my boy, Joey, and we're like, yo, what the f we're gonna do right now? Like we just spent like, $35,000 on his key. He was like, yo, you gotta call this guy back. You gotta call this guy back. And so I, I was like, Shit. he's gonna be like, yo, he, I'm playing him, he's playing me. You know, there's gonna be a, a, a conflict. I grabbed like the liquid yellow plastic bag and I went all the way uptown and brought it to him. And I was like, yo, this is the sh you sold me. And he was like, all right, cool. And so he gave me my money back and that was it, you know? And the DEA like ran on me. They, they had a warrant for the house that, that I had all the stash drugs at. Uh, they caught me coming out of the house. They took my car, the BMW M3. They were driving that. And then they stuck me in this uh, like Dodge Caravan. And I was there with one officer. Sat with him and I, I'm like, yo, can you just let me like give you some money? And uh, you know, you can stash the rest of the money, blah, blah, blah. Cause he had access to like the money that they caught. And I was like, yo, just take like five grand and just leave the rest. You know what I mean? And he was like, yo, you really trying to bribe me right now? And I'm like, nah, nah, nah. But you know what I mean, please. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, you know, never mind f that shit. So yeah, I tried, but it didn't work. We didn't call it toilet wine, we called it the hooch. So I actually made like five gallons a week and I was selling $5 cups um, to other inmates. I would get these like large gallons through the laundry room. So we had like the detergent. That would finish, I would stash all those bottles. Families in, in New York State, you could bring like packages up to your loved ones once a month. So I would ask them to send me like grapes, grapefruit, and just rot all the fruit in, the, in these bottles. And then I'll take like tan, Kool-Aid, all that stuff. And then I will steal like the coffee filters from the staff that was working in the library. So I'll take those coffee filters, take bread, and that'll be my yeast. And I'll mold the bread all together and I'll stick it into the coffee filter, wrap it up and then I'm sticking it in the bottle and so it'll ferment. And so you'll take that bottle and you'll, you'll, you'll open it up little by little to gas it out. Cause if, if you don't gas it out, it'll just blow up like a volcano. And I've had that happen before and it's not pretty and it stinks. Um, and so basically like your, your toilet is your refrigerator because it's like a metal toilet. And, um, but yeah, that's how I did it. And you make like, you can make it in eight days and it'll taste like wine. I've witnessed multiple people overdosing, unfortunately, off of drugs that I've sold. Uh, not proud of it, um, you know, and it's it's sad, you know, I, and, and that's what like made me regret all the things that I was doing back in the day. Um, you know, even neighbors that I've seen like, that I sold coke to or heroin to back in the day, I would see them, you know, pass out and OD. Um, I was, when I, when I was younger, I was selling uh, crack out of like crack houses. So I would see that happening all the time.
So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm considering in selling legalized marijuana again. I'm starting a company called Conbud. I'm working and talking to like legislators and, and trying to be part of that legacy group that was affected by the drug industry. You know, and trying to take advantage of like opening up a space where I also have the same similar mission, hiring people, training people, an apprenticeship program where we teach people how to, you know, run a business and sell legal mar marijuana again.